a year ago this, uh, this time in free agency, a lot of the big names were languishing on the market. This year, very different. Why the difference so dramatic in, in, in one year versus the next? I think the fan base in baseball has kind of spoken about the models that baseball is using, and that is that these predictive models where, where uh, they felt that the successes of teams were going to be measured by something other than, I think, the, the fans' perception of the ballpark of who great players are. And, and we've had attendance drops four years in a row. We've had uh, a lot of metrics in the game that have illustrated that the fans want competition. And a lot of teams chose to be non-competitive for a period of time, and uh, it didn't favor the game. Now I think owners have taken a, a view of these predictive models, have said that they're not working, and they're looking more to a traditional approach. And certainly a team that followed a traditional Bosch won the World Series this year with the Nationals. And so I think we have a, we have a game that is more about the, uh, the mortar uh, of uh, what we are as a game traditionally, and that is great players. So is it your expectation that this is going to become the rule rather than the exception? Well, I think we, we're, they're always looking for creative measures to certainly increase their markets and their footholds in, in the baseball industry and, and growing the league. And they felt that they had a model that would allow them to use younger players, avoid free agents, and, uh, and they thought the clubs would be more successful doing it. And it's illustrated that that... That did not work, and I think getting back to scouting and having veteran players on teams as well as young players. But, but it, certainly I think what we've learned is that teams who employ great players, veteran players, are being very successful, and that uh, the need for them is something that the fans identify with. They want known commodities to go see. They, they want competition at the ballpark, and for a fran franchise to be dormant, to go in hibernation, I, I think fans want to see their bears. They don't want to see their teams in caves for three or four years. Yeah, but there is still this fear, isn't there, among some GMs about signing these long-term deals with players uh, who invariably seem, certainly in the out years perhaps, to not perform nearly as well. Uh, and they are extraordinarily expensive, aren't they? I mean, as a longtime New York Mets fan, I can think of countless examples of us paying up for players that ultimately were not worth it. Well, the truth of the matter is, is that we want to talk about the value of players in the day, is that there are players that are probably have a value, a surplus value in the 70 to $80 million amounts for particularly uh, prime years of their career. The clubs choose not to pay that for a, a much higher amount for a shorter period because of their, their rules of the luxury tax, which would bring them penalties. So what they do is that they, in effect, defer the money over a longer period of contracts and what people who are not familiar with the game, they're taking MVP seasons and saying, I'm getting it at a value of half the cost. And then when the players get a little bit more age, they then take a valuation that was actually deferred and suggest that that is something where the club is at a disadvantage when, in fact, earlier in the contract, they got a, a, a tremendous value at limited expense. Scott, it sounds like you're saying Moneyball is dead. This idea that in this sport, this game, which has the biggest data and analytics capabilities, arguably, of, of any sport, they apply them, and it actually, in the end, didn't work to create the fan and business experience that people expected. Is that what you're saying? We just have a lot of clubs. The, these predictive models cause clubs to go into hibernation for four years and that they're non-competitive. And the one thing that fans, they don't want to go to a ballpark and see uh, a team play another team that's non-competitive. The Boston Red Sox won the World Series in 2018. They had a drop in attendance. And the reason for that is that a number of tanking teams came to their ballpark and the fans stayed away. So we have great baseball on one end, but we have non-competitive. I think in sport, fans want a mystery. They want competition. And what they want to see is a model where all clubs have a reasonable opportunity to compete and, and win so that you know your home team has to uh, create, um, I think, a, a standard of play that is uh, competitive and there also is a risk of loss. So I, I don't think anybody wants to see anything in a game other than the fact when they go there that you're seeing Major League Baseball. You're not seeing clubs that are less than Major League Baseball. And I, 
I think the fans realize these predictive models uh, tend for clubs to say, we want to go get draft picks. We want to do things, and therefore, we must lose to get higher draft picks. So we have, we have to have an, an alternative mechanism in, the, in our collective bargaining where we reward teams for success. We don't reward them for losing. And then I think we can remove the, the fans' preeminent concern that I'm going to the ballpark and I'm not going to see true major league competition.